Come for follow up after one month. But she came after five years with fractured neck of femur with osteoporosis, low back pain, diabetes mellitus, hypertension, pushing back faces, peptic ulcer disease. On careful questioning, it is revealed that she was taking oral prednisone for the last five years. Next scenario, a 40 years male was prescribed step 4 treatment. Inhaled meclometason, inhaled salbutamol SOS, sustained daily stupidity. He was briefed to continue the preventive drug, inhaled beclomidacin. After two years, he came for asthma <coughs> with symptoms. On questioning, it is revealed that he is only continuing inhaled salbutamol with occasional sustained release to failure. <coughs> Next scenario, a patient was given omalizulab subcutaneous injection. He developed anaphylaxis presenting as spasm, hypertension, simple, urticaria, and angioedema of the throat and tongue after one hour of administration. He was not briefed about the side effects. More than 90% of the population in Bangladesh are poor, ignorant, and illiterate. All the scenarios indicate that most of the patients prefer to use cheaper drugs. They like to use cheaper oral steroids in spite of side effects. The patients are reluctant to use preventer drugs. They prefer to use deliver drugs, which gives quick but temporary relief. Proper counseling not given. Before prescribing omalizulab, physicians should consider the economic condition of the patients. We are exposed to multiple known and unknown allergens in our surroundings in Bangladesh. So formation of IG is a never-ending, continuous process. If you stop receiving omalizulab injection, your symptoms likely to be recurred. Due to shortage of time, I'm skipping the slides. <coughs> is an IgA blocker. It is a monoclonal antibody manufactured from the mammalian cell line. Omalizulam bites serum free Ig to block inflammation. It is very costly, expensive, does not give permanent relief or remission. It is of doubtful efficacy, chance of serious side effects, including anaphylaxis. Side effects of Malizula. Common side effects are injection site reaction, about 45% cases. There is um, every chance of hypersensitivity in every injection. There is chance of anaphylaxis, usually onset within 2 hours, maybe 24 hours, or even longer, beyond 1 year. There are side effects involving the cardiovascular system. The morphological system, the respiratory system, the nervous system, musculoskeletal system. There is chance of malignancies of the breast, skin, and prostate. There is increased incidence of viral and parasitic infection about 23 percent. <coughs> Education, caution, and education are three fundamental components of effective management plan of asthma. We have to give emphasis on guided self-management plan. Peak flow chart asthma diary to be maintained. Before prescribing palizula, we should look for the pitfall of management of asthma. We have to find out the pitfall of the patient or the physician. More emphasis to be given on inhalation of cheaper preventive drugs to correct the environmental risk factors, if any, to treat the comorbidities. Nationwide survey should be done about the effectiveness of palizula. Who are the candidates for Omalizula? National guideline to be developed for indication and contraindication of Omalizula. Consensus should be made, it should not be generalized. Who are the physicians to prescribe Omalizula? It should be presented by the pulmonologist, a super specialist. It should be patronized in a specialist hospital center. National pharmaceuticals to be encouraged for production and distribution of Omalizula. Price should be reduced. Before prescribing, risk versus benefit should be assessed. Production of IG is a never-ending, continuous process. Only prescribed to the affluent classes. We should not be biased by the campaign of the pharmaceuticals. This costly medicine should not be advocated to the mass population. Formation of asthma club from the central to root level to be encouraged. Lastly, I differ with my learned colleague uh, in that our intention is not to make one poorer, landless, homeless in the name of treatment as many other effective, cheaper regimens, alternatives are available. Thank you. I am really astonished. My learned opponent is a utopian. He thinks about the slum dwellers sitting in this ballroom of Sheraton. So, 
what I have mentioned, he he does not consider the people who are residing in Gulshan Monani area of Bangladesh who sacrifice their hammer car at Shikarpur Breeze in the street side. They are also our client. We have taken Hippocratic oath. I cannot say you are a culprit, you are very rich, I will not treat you. He is my patient, if he can afford. If the science approve of that, why should not I prescribe him this drug if there is cost effectiveness and benefit for the patient? That is my question. When I serve the poor people in the slum area, then I am a social worker. When I treated this person, I am a scientist. Then my eyes closed. I am blind. Because he says, I can afford the cost. What's the harm? If you don't treat him with this drug, he will have, I have shown you in the, in the previous slides, recurrent exacerbations, recurrent hospitalizations, and ultimately he will leave this country and go abroad for treatment of asthma. Do you like that? Will that improve the, uh, uh, what is called, the prestige and dignity of doctors in Bangladesh? So I want to ask my learned colleague to think, rethink once again. Be scientific. Try to. I do not advocate everybody to. Please. <laughs> well, my opponent also has raised the question regarding the, regarding the sustainability of this drug. Well, I ask my colleague, does he advise to abolish all the oncology department from the world? How many patients of cancer will be cured? So if the cancer is not being cured, do you say that these people should not be treated for cancer? So that cannot be the... What I want to say, in the language of the poet, Shudhu ek din phalwasha, mirtu je tarpor, tao zudhi pai, ami tai sai. So, at the cost of so many money, I want one day's peaceful living, healthy life. And thereafter, zato shu moranam dhrubo, kullu nafsin zaikatul mau, zonni le mori te hove, omor ke kotha kove. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Really appreciate the time consuming. The time consuming, with the physicians are very reluctant to give that time. We should, so that we can save millions of dollars and doctors. We should encourage the formation of asthma club so the patient can exchange their views and they can treat themselves, covering the risk factors, if any, and learn the technique of intervention. Respect to chairperson, I like to give emphasis on education of the patient, collection of risk factors to treat the comorbidities, to find out the pitfall either on the part of the physician or on the part of the patient. If the diagnosis is correct, education is given properly, I'm confident the patient will definitely respond. Breathe easy, live easy, or believe. I do agree with my colleague to prescribe such patients who are very rich, affluent, reluctant to take treatment in Bangladesh, often pay for to go abroad in the name of medical treatment and for medical checkup. Lastly, I differ with my planet colleague in that our intention is not to make one poorer, landless, homeless in the name of treatment, as many other alternatives are available. It's very expensive, does not give permanent remission, short lasting and of doubtful efficacy. There are chance of there are every chance of serious side effects including analysis. <laughs>